Hello and welcome to Wood and Tor. What do you use as a controller for your DCC layout? There are many options available to modelers and I'm sure each of us has our own favourite and probably tales of success and failure as we've tried out different methods for controlling our locos and accessories. At the moment I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 running JMRI software with a Pi Sprog 3 Plus board which is a dual output DCC interface for the Pi. I have to say I'm very pleased with the way it all works and as the Pi supports Wi-Fi it gives me several options for controlling my layout. I'm able to use either engine driver on Android or Wi-Fi throttle on the iPhone to connect to the JMRI software on the Pi so running locos is straightforward. I can also connect to the Pi from my Apple Mac using the VNC viewer which means I can use a large screen for such things as CB settings or changing functions on my decoder as well as controlling locos etc. Of course when selecting a DCC controller price is also a factor that plays its part in what we choose and one of the reasons I went down the Raspberry Pi route was because I had a Raspberry Pi spare and the cost of the Pi Sprog 3 Plus board was about the £100 mark, so it was within the limited budget that I had at the time. Having used the Pi as a controller, I am now thinking of getting another one for a possible new layout. But, as I expect many of you are aware, the Raspberry Pi is in short supply. And while they are available if you search for them, they are not always optimally priced. So I decide to see if there was something else I might use and that led me to the DCC X and the possibility of using a Mega 256 controller board. So what I'm hoping to do in this video is cover what is needed to get DCC X working and also looking at the hardware components and how they fit together. Based on the advice on the DCCX website, I've gone for the following items. First, you need a controller board which is compatible with Arduino IDE. Of course, you could purchase an Arduino Mega R3 board, but I went for the Elegoo Mega R3 control board which is compatible with Arduino. The main reason for my choice was because at the time of filming, the board was around £19 on Amazon, which I thought was quite reasonable. Secondly, you'll need a motor shield. Again, there are plenty to choose from and again, Arduino is one of the options. But again, partly because of price, I went for the Dynamore L298P Shield Expansion Board DCC Motor Driver Module 2A H Bridge 2-Way Compatible with Uno R3 Mega 2560. I have to admit, it's a bit of a mouthful, but at around £16 on Amazon, it seemed a reasonable option for the motor shield. Then thirdly, and this will all depend on whether you want to use Wi-Fi or not, you will also need or might consider buying a Wi-Fi shield. The advice here is to go for a MakerFab's ESP8266 Wi-Fi shield, but I found them hard to come by. So instead purchased a £6 UMT Media ESP8266 R3 serial Wi-Fi shield. Actually, after purchasing that, I did find the MakerFab's Wi-Fi shield were available from China and I ordered a couple there. So if I need to, I can replace the UMT Media one with a MakerFab's Wi-Fi shield once they arrive. But for now, I'll use what I have and see how we get on. So what do we do with all these bits? Of course, we will need some extra wires and things. And again, I would say go to the DCCX website for advice. We'll also need a couple of power supplies, one for the controller board and one for the motor shield. The first thing we'll do is make sure that the power to the motor shield and the controller board are separate. And that will involve a little bit of work on the motor shield to make sure it isn't taking any power from the controller board. So I'll have a look at that in a minute because it's a very easy thing to do but it's also probably a slightly fiddly thing if you're a bit worried about cutting or playing with 
PCBs. But once we've done that, then we'll find that the boards, the controller board, the motor board and the Wi-Fi shield all fit together quite easily. And with a couple of wires, we can connect them up and then we'll be ready to start looking at putting on the software and that side of things. As I said, before we start putting the boards together, before we start putting the motor shield onto the controller board or the Wi-Fi shield onto the motor board, we do have to make sure that the power to the motor shield and the controller board are separate. And to do that, we have to make sure that the motor board is not picking up any power from the controller board. That's done very easily by one of two methods. One is to either actually bend and remove the V-in pin, or on the board itself, on the motor shield board, there is a couple of solder points which have a connection between them, which are marked as V-in. Again, if you look at the DCCX website, it's very clear what to do. And as I'm showing now, on the, here's the board, and as you'll see, there is the V-in and the place to cut. So my plan is to just use my scalpel to gently cut that uh, connection between the two solder points. Can of course, once you've done that, test it out to see if there is a connection or not. Um, but then we should be okay for putting the boards together. So let's do that. Um, I'm obviously going to do it off camera, I think, rather than try and film it, especially as my hands will get in the way. But it should be a fairly simple thing to do. Having cut the connection between the two solder points at VN, we're ready to start putting our hardware together. The motor shield will sit on top of the controller board and the Wi-Fi shield will sit on top of the motor shield. We'll also want to attach the RX and TX from the Wi-Fi shield to the TX and RX on the controller board so that Wi-Fi can be used. We'll also want to look at connecting our controller board to our computer so we're ready to download software. We'll also want to start looking at connecting the power supplies to our motor shield and controller board. As you'll see from what I'm just showing now, the three boards go together quite simply, but of course you have to be careful that the pins are aligned correctly. The boards also are notched at one end, so it should be easy to see which way round they go and how they fit together. Once we have the three boards together, we're also going to want to connect the RX and TX of the Wi-Fi shield with the TX and RX on the controller board so that we can use Wi-Fi. We'll also want to connect the controller board to our computer so we're able to download software. And at this stage, we'll be getting ready to put power into the motor shield and the controller board itself. Once we've done that, hopefully we'll be able to download software and then we'll be able to move on to connecting our new command station to our track and seeing how everything works. Today has been one of those days when things just don't work out as planned. I would expected to be able to download software to my command station, try things out and hopefully be reporting everything was fine and dandy. Unfortunately, that's not how it went. The first problem I had was that when I connected my controller board to the Mac, everything was fine, it was, I could see it and everything. But when I tried to run the EX installer, which is provided by DCC EX, to install software onto the controller board, basically it kept failing because Apple security decided to step in and say, nope, you can't run this, it's not from a known developer. And again, no matter what I tried, it just refused to do it. So I had the frustration of not being able to download the software I needed to the command station from the Mac. However, I do have a PC, a Windows-based PC, so I moved on to that. And to be fair, things there went quite smoothly. I was able to download the EX installer, run it on the Windows PC, and I was connected to the controller board via USB cable, and it started downloading the software to the controller board. 
That seemed fine until it got about halfway through the install, in which case it just fell over and said uploading error. And again, I tried a number of things, a number of different things. Was I, Did I have the right COM port? Did I have the right board rates and things like that? Nothing solved it. Then I took this Wi-Fi shield off the command station and everything worked fine. So I'm pointing the finger at this Wi-Fi shield and saying it's not worth having, it doesn't work. Once I'd uh, solved that as it were because of the error with the Wi-Fi shield, I then had software downloaded and onto my uh, controller board. Fortunately at the same time, during today, my Maker Fab's Wi-Fi shield turned up, so I've ended up putting that onto my system. And I then reinstalled the software once that was on and everything went through smoothly. So I'm definitely pointing, thinking this Wi-Fi board is a problem with this setup. One thing I also noticed was with the Mega Fab's uh, Wi-Fi shield, it actually doesn't cover the um, motor shield connections, power connections, so it can get out. Where with the other shield that I had, it was much bigger, it overshadowed there. So anyway, having uh, put the Make, Make, of, Make of Fabs Wi-Fi shield, <laughs> sorry, um, onto the board, I've downloaded the software. I've actually done a quick test via the PC to sh make sure I can talk to the um, controller board, which I can. But now what I've got to do is set up the Wi-Fi so I can actually get to it from my uh, phone and over the connector via the net, because I don't want this to be tethered to a PC all the time, at least not initially. And then once I've done that, I can connect to the programming and the main track. I can power up the motor shield and we'll see if I can actually get a train running. But the next thing to do is see if I can get talking to this via Wi-Fi. Having taken a quick look at the DCDX website, I discovered there's a fairly simple way to enable the Wi-Fi shield to connect to my home network. Basically, running EX Installer, one of the options is obviously to enable Wi-Fi, and one of the things you can do is, while you're doing that is actually put in your network name and password. That all gets downloaded then to the uh, controller board. Once that's done, the Wi-Fi shield, when you power things up, logs on to your network. And once it's on the network, you can then talk to the Wi-Fi shield and I also the controller board through the Wi-Fi. I did a quick check of that. Um, I used my Android um, engine driver. I was able to address or put in the address of the Wi-Fi board. I was able to connect to the command station. So at least now I'm talking to this from my phone. What I haven't done yet is connect up to the main track or to a programming track, which is the next thing to do, and just to see if I can actually control a local. Boards are all powered up. The track is connected through to the motor shield. And I have a loco sitting on the track. All I need to do now is see if it works. So the first thing I did on my um, Android engine driver, I actually have connected to the uh, command station I built. And I'm at the stage now where I'm going to select the locomote loco. First thing I probably need to do is go through and select the power. Yeah, and switch the power on to the actual uh, board. And as you'll see, I now have power going out to the main track, to which is what's connected. The other connection here is if I've got a programming track, which I haven't done yet. So, having got the power, the next thing to do is go back and actually select. Now, I know the address of this loco is 1110. I'll acquire it. So I've now got, hopefully, that acquired. So why don't we just try the lights? And there we are. How about sound? 
Stop that and stop that. What about ocean? Yep, there we are. It goes as well. Stop it. Reverse it. Can't do very much, of course, because I've got a very short bit of track. So, so there we are. I've uh, actually. Yep, it's all working. Actually, uh, able to control my uh, loco using my dccx command station which i've built i'm quite pleased with that now of course what i haven't done yet or what i need to next do is find out how to get gmri software working because at the moment i've got no access to a roster or anything like that and it can see it be quite hard remembering all the numbers but anyway I think that's it for tonight. We've got some success. I've got a board working and I can actually use my Android phone with engine driver to control the loco that's on the board there. At the end of the day, I think I've created quite a reasonable command station for my DCC layout based on well-priced items. Altogether, that is costing around about £40, which is not bad for a DCC control station. Of course, there are power supplies that have to be bought as well, and I think that uh, they can each of them can be around about £18, which pushes the price up. What I haven't done yet is get GMRI software working on it. That's something I'll do in the future. But for now, I have a board which I can use to control my um, DCC layout. And it's quite a bit cheaper than using a Raspberry Pi and the S-Prog um, board that I've been using. But it has been fiddly in some ways. I said I had that problem of actually doing anything or installing the software on the controller board from my Mac. I just couldn't do it. I had to use a PC. I had the problem with the other Wi-Fi shield just not working properly. So it was uh, fortunate for me that my Maker Fabs Wi-Fi shield turned up. It's all together. I think also at the moment, as I said, I haven't tried out how will I get GMRI working. <laughs> oh dear. I haven't worked out how I will get GMRI working. I'm used to having GMRI sitting on my Raspberry Pi and not having to be connected or tethered to a computer. I have a feeling to use this, I'm going to have to tether a computer to it and the GMRI will run on the computer and this will send the commands down. But I'll try that out and see how it goes. But at the end of the day, I would say have a look at DCCX. As I said, the website is very clear, very uh, good instructions. There are one or two areas where it can improve. As I said, the problem I have having with that download when the Wi-Fi shield wasn't working there wasn't really a meaningful error message. It just said upload failed. Well, that doesn't really tell you anything. It doesn't tell you where it failed or why it failed. But I'm sure that they will work on that side of things. Obviously, uh, DCCX itself is open software. It's readily available. It's free to download. And as I said, using the PC, it was easy to do. So all in all, I think it's a thumbs up for me for the... Um, DCCX are uh, certainly going to work on getting GMRI working, but I think as a cost effective way of having a DCC controller, it's a good idea.